Hey everyone, that's so Slim Jim here again for another installment of the Budget KO4 build. Anyways, I'm coming with you at a little bit different of a video this time. Only because with this one, um, if you don't have the skills to be able to do this, I'm not going to be able to teach you to do it out in the video. So rather what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically show you what I did because with this one, you're going to have to know how to do some fabrication work. So if you don't already know how to do fabrication work, then this probably isn't going to be something for you. Now, if you want to do aftermarket waste gates, <coughs> you can go to Silly, uh, Silly Rabbit Motorsports and they actually sell uh, brackets that already work. Now, the nice part about their brackets is they're basically factory brackets because they use teal waste gates. And teal waste gates, believe it or not, are actually smaller than the factory waste gates. So they, they work pretty easily. What they do is they just adapt the, the factory brackets, clean them up well, but, or drill some holes or whatever they do with them. I've seen some pictures of them. They weld on some uh, threaded stainless steel rod and they make them work. Honestly, I'm not amazingly impressed with the, the way they do it, but they work, so whatever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through how I came to this now one thing I'll say is if I had to do it again I probably would have went with teal waste gates and the only reason I say teal is because they are 2.5 inches in diameter which would have made them a little bit easier to use but I got these on Amazon uh, for Black Friday on sale for 75 bucks so I got them for cheap uh, the reason I say that though are these are 2.9 inches in diameter so they are a bit hefty compared to the stock style ones, which are 2.73 inches in diameter. So they are bigger than stock. So they created a little bit of uh, having to work around, especially on this turbo here, just because the angles are a little funky. So what I did to come to this is I basically took the factory waste gates because I'm not going to need these. And if I need to, I can actually put these back together. And I drilled out the little teeny welds I had into them, popped these guys off. And for this turbo, it's real simple. All I did is I went to a piece of eighth inch stainless steel, put it down on top, traced it out, traced the holes where it needed to go onto the turbo. Then from that point, I widened this a little bit so I had more meat to work with because the bolt pattern is wider than I have for the metal here. Then I moved it out slightly so the center of the hole I moved out so because these are 0.9 inches these are roughly oh, I'm sorry 2.9 inches versus 2.7 so I moved it out about 0.2 inches just to have a little bit of wiggle room from the center line is on this outwards to make sure I had enough room to clear this then from that point where the center point is I measured the distance on these two which is Roughly 1.3 inches space between the two of them. After I had the center point in that, put 0.13 inches, made sure I had enough meat. And I used a plasma cutter to cut mine out because I'm lucky enough to have one. But you don't need a plasma cutter. You can use a grinder. You can use a CNC plasma cutter if you're super lucky to have one. You can use whatever you can to uh, cut them out. Now, one thing I'll say though is I used one eighth inch thick uh, stainless because that's what the factory brackets are made out of. I will say that I would recommend using something a little bit thicker um, all the way up to maybe a quarter inch just to give it stronger because I, I did have a little bit of flex issue on this guy which I rectify by going back and adding some really, really ugly welds to it. I went over it like three times with some stainless steel rod. I know they're fugly, it happens. And that gave me the rigidity I need to reduce the amount of flex I had after I put preload on it. So, Because after the metal heats up, it's gonna kinda heat up, cool down, heat up, cool down. And I don't want this guy to pull in and sit on the uh, the, the inlet and, and eventually put a, you know, put a hole into it, do whatever it may do. So I put that in there and made sure there's enough room. So a quarter inch may be better or something a little bit bigger than one eighth or if you want to you can use one eighth still and just make sure you reinforce it. So like I said this one was an easy one, took me maybe 
uh, half an hour to make this bolt holes lined right up and then from that point I took the rod took myself your basic map torch which you can get at Home Depot Lowe's pretty much just about any uh, hardware store propane will work as well a lighter will not work for this uh, and then put the rod in figured out which position it is took a magic marker once it was in position made a mark bent it a little bit bent it a little bit and just keep bending it now I did have to weld in about one inch of extension rod which is real easy to get I just picked up some uh, quarter inch stainless steel rod cut off an inch cut this guy laid it down flat on the table welded around it added that one inch of length I needed to make sure it works I tried to tap this stuff unfortunately the taps I have suck this is some really strong structural stainless and it did not want to cut so what I did is I just cut above the existing threads and then welded it in between and after I got the bends it went in now I actually went a little long so the old adage goes you know measure twice cut once well I, I was this pretty much shook me all day yesterday and I was getting kind of ornery because I had my I had my stent and I got my stent removed from my kidney today so I'm a lot better mood today so it's a little long but it fits just perfect for the amount of preload. In fact, I might actually have to reduce the preload because the preload of these wastegates is considerably more than the factory ones put out. So I put it where it is right now with two uh, full turns, and it, it really torques these guys down, so I'm probably going to have to loosen up a little bit. But got the bends, heated it, put it into my vise, took a, you know, a close-in wrench, Heat it till I got just barely orange, put a little bend, put another little bend, checked it. You know, you're going to have to do this a few times to get it just right to the point where the clevis comes up and down. And you want it to freely move up and down on the threads. Once you get that, you're good. Let it cool off. And then this guy was done. Real simple. This one was a little bit more of a challenge. What I did is I made mine in three parts. Now, if you really wanted to, you could make this in one part. What I did is I laid it down, took a magic marker, lined it out, then rotated it over, took a magic marker, rotated the next part, rolled it over again, took a magic marker, made the next part. And I did the same thing with this one where I took the hole, moved it up 0.2 inches, you know, added the extra girth I needed, but this time I rotated it out a little bit. Kind of, I kind of eyeballed it for that one because what I did is instead of just trying to move it out, it doesn't work with this because it's not moving this way, it's moving forward. So what I did is I rotated it this way uh, off a pivot point on this corner to try to get it away from the inlet as best I could. And even then, it's still, it's still pretty close, but as much strength as I put in this thing, I don't think I'm really going to have any issues with it uh, heating up and sucking down in there. Because I also added uh, a gusset on the inside here and a gusset on this corner. So this is, this is really strong here. But if you do that and you measure, basically take yourself like a piece of string, measure from this corner to the end, and then figure out how long that is, and then measure on your drawing to make, and make sure those two measurements are the same so you don't want it to be too long and make sure that's good you can cut it out in one piece then heat up where the bends are supposed to be bend it and do remember on this one it's not a straight bend it actually has a kind of a angle to it so you're going to want to recreate that angle and then from that part you can cut it out in one piece like the factory one is put the two bends into it add the extra girth that comes out because you want the girth to be on this side so you can take it instead of being straight like that rotate it this way to move it away from the inlet add your two holes plus your center hole which is going to be larger so you can get the rod through plus you have that little bearing that goes or not bearing but the slide portion that goes down in the center where the shaft comes out and then this one this one took a little while because you have to worry about making sure this diameter is straight and what, what I did is after I got it done and I made sure I had the two holes cut exactly right I took the factory one and I put it up to it. I took a magic marker because I always cut it a little bit, a little proud just to make sure that I have a room to work with because it's a lot easier to take metal away than it is to add metal back. And I added a magic marker around to it 
and I took a flap disc. I took a 80 grit flap disc and I slowly worked at it until I had the exact concave that, that uh, matched up with these two bolt holes perfectly. So I know that when it went on the bottom, it would fit absolute, and it's, it's, I mean, it fits in there just like the factory one does. So it will hold the uh, compressor housing onto the center section just right. So you gotta get this perfect first before you start messing with anything else. Then you gotta test fit it, and then same thing for this one. You're gonna get it close, then you have to grind a little bit, grind a little bit, grind a little bit, because you wanna give at least an eighth of an inch gap in here to make sure it's not rubbing. And then once you get that done, then you can bend the top and bend it over and move it and wait till you get it just right. Make sure it fits properly. Make sure you get enough room where you get gap where your when your rod comes down. So I got about another eighth of an inch gap. And you can see the way the rod comes down. Actually, <clears throat> this fits a lot better than the factory one did. Because the factory one became too far down with the housing. So by completely clearing the housing, now it clears it comes down and then I had to put just a slight bend just prior to the uh, the threads but once again the clevis slides up and down at no problem so you can see the bends I did into it and this one I think I had to add 2.4 inches of rod which I think this rod right here was maybe six seven dollars I got two of them just to be safe this is the the one I didn't use but uh Went ahead and added that in there. You know, it's once again not the prettiest welds, but it ain't going nowhere. nowhere. These are going to be hidden, so I'm not too uh, crazy about having to make them be absolute pretty. Once I go single turbo, then then I'll make everything look absolutely perfect. Until then, these are going to be hidden, so I care more about functionality. So this one's going to take you a little while. You're going to have to play with it and massage it and move it and bend it and make sure it clears and make sure you get enough room. And the way I make sure I have clearance is I'm doing the... Uh, Instead of having the inlet that goes on, I'm going to be doing the, the coupler where you cut off the end of the inlet, put a coupler on. So I just put my coupler down there. You can see it's a close fit. The coupler is actually quite a bit uh, wider than the inlet is, so I'm going to have a little bit more room. But I put that on it, and that's how I checked how much room I had to work with. This one, I have just tons of room to work. But I want to keep it as close as I can without being too close because obviously you're going to have clearance issues if you go super wide out. You know, if I keep it, if I move it an inch that way, it may not fit once I go to put the engine back in. So, as usual, get this close, do your bends, take your time with your bends. First, I bent it too far, then I had to bend it back, then I had to bend it in a little bit. So, just take your time, do what you need to do. And like I said, if you wanted to, when you're done, I made little marks in which direction these go. So, if I really, oops, cut that backwards, if I really wanted to, I could actually smooth it out. And then do some little quick plug welds and put these guys back together, which would be oops, wrong way. Da, da, da. I had a mark on here. Ah, there it is. Somewhere. Hold on a sec. Jimmy's being targeted again. Ah, there we go. Yep. Clean it up. Push it back together. Four little quick plug welds, and then there you go. This guy's working. In. And I could scratch that up or repaint it, throw some spray paint on it, whatever. I don't know. I really don't need them. I didn't mind sacrificing it for the cause. But this really wasn't hard. Like I said, it took me the better part of the day because uh, no one really makes custom brackets for the Turbo Smart ones. So this was kind of me going, hey, it can be done. So now that you see kind of how it looks and what it takes, like I said, for this one, definitely make sure to put a little corner in there, put some extra welding on the inside, or if you want to, I just took a, a rod and just burned it up towards the center and just kept adding on and adding on. You can't see it on the camera too well, but it is ugly, I guarantee you that. <coughs> then add some thick rods on the back side. Uh, if you can't weld or you don't have the welding equipment, instead of using one eight, use a quarter. A quarter should be strong enough where you don't need any reinforcement gussets or anything of that nature to keep this from flexing. Um, just gotta heat up to do the bends. Uh, so the, really the only thing you need to be able to do this, and here's another thing, if you want to, if you don't have the ability to weld for these guys, what you can do is you're not gonna use a quarter inch, because a quarter inch is a little bit too big. 
Uh, uh, these are actually, I'm going to get you in metric because it's a lot easier to understand. Oh, a sec. If you get, oh, I can't figure it out. Yep, six millimeter. Six millimeter stainless steel rod. You can buy these guys, which are connectors. Um, I think I bought these from Bolt Depot. I got four of them. It's uh, the standard threading is one fourth by 28 and they're seven eighth inch long. I got these with shipping for I think five dollars which is expensive but you know if you want to do it and then you just bring your uh cut up a little bit higher and you can tap it and then you can just screw these on and then screw one up here wherever you need to just keep it away from the bends or you can put it further up here put these guys on a little bit of uh, thread thread locker and then grab yourself some jam nuts which i got the little skinny guys so you can take one Jam nut it on top, jam nut it on the bottom, put some Loctite in there. Then you don't even need to be able to weld to be able to put the extensions on the arm. So obviously they're not long enough. Now, if you have any questions about how I had to do anything, I mean, I, I think I laid it out pretty easy. If you're not sure what tools to use or what metal to use or how to go about it or anything of that nature, feel free to ask in the comments section. I know some guys probably going to ask, how do you clock these? It doesn't matter. You can go left or right. Um, that's not an issue. The nipple doesn't matter because I said the nipple spins. So you can clock that any way you want to. If you're really caring about how the turbo thing or the, the face uh, faces, you can actually loosen this, clock that, then tighten it back down. But for the most part, it was a pretty simple project. Just took a little bit of work, a lot of uh, finessing, grinding, cutting, and fitting. So if you got any questions, leave them in the comment section like always. Uh, and I promise the next video will be more interesting. All right, you all have a great day.